In this screencast, we are going to connect the aggregate demand and aggregate supply model to things that we've learned in the past. We're going to look at the production's possibility curve from Unit 1, and we're going to connect it with the business cycle that we've learned in Unit 2. So for the ADAS model, remember here that you've got the short-run aggregate supply curve and the long-run aggregate supply curve. And for the production's possibility curve, we're talking about the maximum amount that you can produce with the given resources that you have. So when we look here at the ADAS model, the classical model, or the long run, has a perfectly vertical, vertical long run aggregate supply. And with that, remember what we're saying is that wages and the price level are flexible and they will move because output is already at full employment and so that is going to stay where it's at. And so if we're thinking that um, we're using a full employment of our output, that has to be then along the production's possibility curve, meaning that we're at that maximum amount that you can produce with the given resources that you have. Another part of the ADAS model is the Keynesian range. And with the Keynesian model, what we're talking about here is that in the short run, in the beginning, wages and price levels are sticky. They're not flexible meaning that there's not enough time for them to be able to change if um, the economy is below that full employment level. And so with that, if we're not at the full employment level, that means that we have to be somewhere below the production's possibility curve. Connecting the Keynesian model with the classical model is that intermediate range. And with that, this is where you start to see that um, prices, the price level and wages are a little more flexible. They're not as flexible as you have in the long run, but as output is rising, you also have a rise in the price level. And so you're closer to full employment than you would be in the Keynesian range. And so this um, intermediate would be somewhere in between the Keynesian range, but still below the full employment or that maximum amount that you can produce with the given resources that you have. So outside of looking at the production's possibility curve, we can also connect it with the business cycle. And remember, there's two really major phases of the business cycle. This one that we're looking at here is the contractionary phase. And with the contractionary phase, this is where you have GDP going down. Um, it's not a recession because for a recession, it would have to be two consecutive quarters of negative GDP. But this could be just one um, stage where you have GDP at a negative growth. You can represent that with the ADAS model where you have here the growth is going down. You have a decrease in the aggregate demand. And so you're not at that full employment level of output. And so this would show here a connection of where you have price level is going down, you have unemployment going up because you're not able to um, have as large of an output as you would have before during this time when GDP is going down. Remember, there's always an inverse relationship between GDP and unemployment. The other way to look at it is the expansionary pace. Phase. So here again is that contractionary, you hit the bottom or the trough and then you pull, pull into that expansionary or recovery, recovery phase of the business cycle. And during this stage here, you have GDP that is growing. And so an example of that could be where you're at a full level of employment and your aggregate demand is increasing and as a result, your GDP is also increasing. Remember, though, too, if we were way back at where we were at in the previous one, you could even have the expansionary happening here, and it's showing your output growing. Maybe you're still not at that full level employment of um, output. However, any increase in aggregate demand is going to show an increase in GDP. And so as you continue along with this, you have GDP rising, which is economic growth. You have the price level rising, which is inflation. And then you would also have unemployment decreasing because you would have more production happening and more jobs being made. GDP having, being positive and growing 
grows up until a point where it maxes out, and that's where it has its peak before it hits the next phase, which would be the contractionary phase.